What we do here is go back, 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 back. back. And welcome back. Uh, as many of you know by now, O.J. Simpson has been uh, released from prison. And he is on parole. He is now uh, living with his daughter in Vegas. But some of you may not know his initial plans were to move back to Florida, where he lived before his armed robbery conviction. Well, and some of you may not know that Florida's Attorney General, uh, Pam Bondi, um, urged the Department of Corrections to reject any request to transfer Simpson parole to Florida. She did not want him and told him, made a public appearance on the news stating that he was not welcome back in Florida. Um, in case you did not see that video, I have it right here, and uh, I'll play it now. We've Thank got a, a big guest we want to bring in now, Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi. As you just heard there from Adam Pam, you never know what's going to happen with O.J. Simpson. Taking a lot of us by surprise, being released overnight. We thought maybe it would be a few days, maybe a week from now. You are fired up about this in Florida. That's where he wants to go. You say he's not welcome here. Abby, he's not. And, you know, you know we have, um, I've handled parole hearings my entire career as a prosecutor, and I have never, I went back and watched his parole hearing with the commissioners. I have never seen such a lack of remorse in my entire career. I've handled countless parole hearings. And for this guy to want to come to Florida, and basically, you know, his buddy who he wants to live with, Tom Scott Co., is still tweeting jokes about the juices on the loose. I don't find that humorous at all. He was found civilly liable. I know he wasn't convicted. He owes the Goldmans $33 million. He hasn't paid a penny of it. Um, we know that Susan Jackson in the parole hearing, the parole commissioner, told him to get alcohol treatment because he said he was drunk when he committed the armed robberies. He did not follow through on that. We've gone back. We've listened to that entire hearing, his laughing during the hearing. And we've also looked at his... Um, other than his just complete lack of remorse, um, he wants to come to Florida and golf all over our state, and I don't want that to happen. Attorney General Bondi, you wrote a letter with regard to what you just said, asking that he not be allowed in the state of Florida. On this show, Fox and Friends, we talk a lot about the rule of law, so I want to be very consistent on this, okay? Yes. What in the rule of law do you think supports your position on this? Because a number of commentators don't support your position. Well, and here, here's, and, and, and that's why I did put it in the alternative. If they find he can live here, I want restrictions placed on him. I made that very clear. But we don't have all the record yet. For instance, we get a look at his entire Department of Corrections file. And the only way Florida now knows that he didn't complete his alcohol treatment was because the commissioner mentioned it at the hearing. So at, from doing parole hearings my entire career, we get a look. DOC will get to look at that file. We'll get to see his disciplinary actions. We'll get to see if they're extenuating factors. We also know, we all know, he lied to those commissioners in that hearing when he said that he has had no violent acts. He's lived a conflict-free life. He's a peaceful person. I don't think anybody in the world knows that's true. Listen to Nicole Brown Simpson's 911 call weeks before the murder. Look, look at all the domestic violence. I mean, I could go on and on and on. Things that are well documented. So, um, so we might have to take him, though. We might. There is no right to take him, but under the criteria and the hook he's using is that he has family living here. And it's a shame, frankly, because his ch children, I think, have led really good lives. They've chosen to live under anonymity, and now he's going to bring them to the forefront of this if he comes to our state. 
But if he is allowed to come, that's when we get to go through his file. That's when we say, you're not going to report in by mail, O.J. Simpson. You're going to have travel restrictions. You're going to get alcohol tested. You are not going to be allowed to drink in our state. And those are things that we're all going to be able to enforce. And by the way, Nevada made our state think, our Department of Corrections think, that this man was not being released until next week. So therefore, mm -hmm. we have not seen any mm -hmm. travel plans from him. So if they're trying to pull something fast on Florida, it's not going to work in my state. Well, Pam, he'll end up likely either in Nevada or Florida. Florida, but our own Adam Housey is reporting that the first photo of O.J. Simpson may be worth upwards of $20,000. Uh, what does that say to you about, about how the public views O.J. Simpson vis-a-vis -vis well, how you may view him? You know what? Public, if you see him in Florida, take some pictures. Send them in. Send them in so we can see what he's doing. If you see him drinking alcohol, whatever you see him doing. And I saw one of his... Um, Former defense attorneys warn him of that. Social media is everywhere now. So if he's yeah. going to act up, we're going to find him in Florida. Well, and, um, he may be joining social media himself, Pam. I mean, he says he wants to enjoy the simplicities of life. He wants to enjoy seafood and steak. <laughs> and he wants to get an iPhone because he's been in prison the whole time before the iPhone was even invented or brought well, into our right. lives. So maybe we'll see him on hey. Twitter. And he, he uh, you know what, Abby, I think he wants the limelight. I think he will. I don't think the man can help himself. And I think that's what's ultimately going to get him back in trouble. Do we want anyone to fail? No. But do we want someone with such a violent past in our state? No. If we have to accept him, we're going to put some tough conditions on him. All right. Be very interesting. Well, you see. heard it there. Attorney General of Florida, Pam Bondi, great to have you on this morning. We'll see what you. happens. Thank you. <laughs> okay, guys. All right. Uh, on that clip, you saw the attorney general um, state that, you know, she didn't want him in her, in her quote, her state. And, uh, you know, she says he was not convicted of murder, his wife and friend, but he was uh, 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 civilly convicted. <clears throat> and... The thing that worried me most and just was I just ironic is her main fear is him golfing, quote, I tell you, golfing all over her state. She did not want him, and I quote, golfing all over her state. Now, you know, it 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 is it is very uh hard to think. But in actuality, they are literally um prosecuting this man as though he was a murderer. I mean, even that he is, was not a convicted murder, these charges of armed robbery, which the person had stole his trophies, and he, excuse me, hired these two guys to go get them back. He went with them. That's where he got his armed robbery conviction trying to get his stolen memorabilia up back. But no, these nine years is and 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 the um in the white society it's for the killing of Nicole Simpson and her friend. It, it, at no time was he found guilty. And I believe his case was the first case well brought to um our attention that he was acquitted for murder, but he still he was civilly convicted <laughs> of killing her, which the families of um the um, guy that he killed, Goldman, could sue, and they did sue. Now, mind you that 
uh, no one before this, before the murders took place, OJ was a legend. He was um, the old hometown hero. Um, before the killing of his wife, I'm sorry, of his wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ronald Goldman, in 1994, uh, I'm... Uh, I'll give you uh, what they uh, uh, um, what they uh, described him as. Simpson was once an electrifying running back, Dub Juice, who won the Heisman Trophy as the nation's best college football player for USC in 1968, and became one of the NFL's all-time greats. With the Buffalo Bills. Handsome and charming, he also provided commentary on Monday Night Football, became the face of Hertz rental car commercials, and built a movie career with Rose and the Naked Gun, comedies, and other films. And this is what they describe him as now. Simpson fell from grace fell from grace when he was arrested in the slings after a famous slow-speed Ford Bronco chase on California freeway. His subsequent trial became a live TV sensation that fascinated viewers with its testimony about a bloody glove that didn't fit and unleashed furious debate over race police, and celebrity justice. Now, as you heard, he fell from grace. Not because he was convicted of killing his white wife, Nicole Simpson, but because they think he killed him. Now, uh, like I said, that was the most disturbing thing that the the attorney governor said that that uh, he had a you know violent past and he was violent and they they didn't want him to come to the state and da 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 da. da. Now, I, I, like I said, before the killings of his wife and her friend, O.J. was just an old town hero. He was loved in the white community as well as the black. Now, I want to show you this video that was taken last year. And it tells us about a murderer who was paroled and is living in Florida now. And uh, just take a look at the video, and then we'll talk about that. Mike DeForest. Nowadays, if someone is convicted of first-degree murder, uh, if they're not given the death penalty, then they are sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Now, that has not always been the case. Prior to the mid-1990s, inmates convicted of first-degree murder uh, could have spent several decades in prison, but they did have the option of petitioning a parole board to try to get out and serve the rest of their sentence here in the community. They also had the option of uh, knocking off time on their prison sentence by good behavior. That's not the case now, but it was, uh, say, back in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. And we figured people who committed crimes back then uh, possibly are out right now living in our community. We wanted to find out more information about that. So where I turned was the Florida Department of Corrections website. They have several databases detailing the inmates who have both been in the system in the past and currently in their system, including those who are on parole right now. Now, it's not very user friendly to use. Uh, you have to have a little bit of experience in Excel spreadsheets. Uh, but I was able to combine several databases and come up with a list of all of the people in Florida who are on parole for first degree murder or attempted first degree murder. And looking 
was statewide, we discovered that there were about 175 individuals that fit that criteria. Uh, from there, we dug a little bit deeper. I want to see how many were right here in our Central Florida viewing area. And when I looked at the list closer, it looked like there was about two dozen. So uh, now I've got the names of these people who are on parole for convictions of first-degree murder. But I need to learn a little bit more about their cases. Um, if a crime were to happen nowadays, you could either go down to the courthouse or even some uh, court courthouses have websites where you can actually read the court documents from their cases. Uh, we didn't have that luxury for crimes committed in, say, the 1970s and 80s, so I went to uh, what may be the next best thing, and that's newspapers. Now, I could have gone down to the library, pulled up an old black and white newspaper. Uh, fortunately, nowadays, though, a lot of newspapers are scanned online, so I was literally reading old newspapers to try to find out uh, what these guys were accused of doing, what they were convicted of doing, and that's when I learned about a man named Ted Bassino. Here's uh, some video of him. Ted Bassino uh, actually just got out of prison in Illinois a couple months back after uh, he admits he shot and killed a police officer during the robbery. So it was through crunching these data that I was actually able to come up with his name. Uh, we decided to pay him a visit. He has every right to be living out on parole as long as he's following the rules, and uh, he invited us into his garage to chat, and through that we were able to talk to him about what it's like to be an inmate on parole. And in his case, he showed us the ankle bracelet and the GPS monitor and talked to us about how he has to check in with his parole officer. So uh, we learned a lot of things that we probably wouldn't have known if we wouldn't have known he was living here in Central Florida uh, without being able to crunch this data on the Florida Department of Corrections website. So that's just a little bit of behind the scenes of uh, how we were able to put this story together. Right now. A convicted murderer could be living in your neighborhood and you may not even know it. A new six investigation has found dozens of convicted killers. Some with life prison sentences have moved into central Florida communities. Investigator Mike DeForest is here. Mike. This has to be surprising to their neighbors. It is, Matt. Unlike sex offender notification laws, the state is under no legal obligation to inform the community when a murderer like this one is released on parole. I was escaping after a robbery that day, and that's how a good man, Michael Mayborn, lost his life. Ted Bacino admits he's a cop killer. It happened in 1974 after Bacino held up this bank in Illinois. I could hear him saying, drop it, drop it, drop it. As the gunman tried to get away, he was confronted by Winnebago County Detective Michael Mayborn. We wrestled. And unfortunately, I got the best of them. And he shot me once, and I shot him three times. The outcome was he died, and I'm still here. Bacino's sentence, 75 to 100 years in prison. Yet we found him out of prison, on parole, living in this central Florida neighborhood. I'm free to come and go as I want. I can go anywhere in Orange, Orange County that I want to, whenever I want to. Bacino is among 175 people convicted of first-degree murder now serving parole in Florida. Most of those parolees live in communities like this one. Oh, my. We know nothing. <laughs> they didn't tell you a murderer was moving into your neighborhood? No, I didn't hear a thing. Nowadays, someone convicted of murder in Florida will receive a minimum life sentence without the possibility of parole. But sentencing laws were different in the 1970s, both here and in Illinois. Bacino was eligible for release after serving 41 years, much to the dismay of Detective Mayborn's daughter. It is definitely like living a childhood nightmare to think I can run into him in the streets one day. If I leave the house, go anywhere, this has got to be in my pocket. Since moving here this summer, Bacino has been monitored by the Florida Department of Corrections. I pay $235 a month to wear this. If he breaks the law, he could go back to prison. Sir, this way. That's what's happening right now to Charles Labosco. In 1979, he was sentenced to life for murdering a drug dealer in Georgia and burning his body. Twelve years ago, Labosco was released on parole. He later moved into this new Smyrna Beach neighborhood. But recently, police arrested Labosco for shoplifting from a Daytona Beach Publix and possessing drug paraphernalia. Now he's headed back to prison in Georgia for violating his parole. Bacino insists that won't happen to him. I belong to Jesus Christ, and I'm washed in the blood of the Lamb. I want that on the screen. And as far as anything else goes, it's not really important. 
Now, Ted Bacino is 80 years old. We found that most murderers on parole in Florida are senior citizens like him. Back in the 1990s, Florida and many other states abolished parole. That means those eligible for parole were typically convicted of crimes in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. All right, okay, now you saw that video, and uh, the news reporter, now this actually was done last year, so I'm sure the number has went up, and I would like to say, um, now you saw this uh, Ted Bassino, he was a bank robber and a cop killer. He was sentenced to 75 to 100 years. And he got paroled in 2016. And his home is Central Florida. Now, um, it's interesting to point out that Bacino is among 175 former inmates convicted of first-degree murder or attempted murder who are currently serving parole in Florida. Records show. Now, mind you, again, and another fact I want to let you know, George Zimmerman, uh, who lives in Florida, who killed an unarmed black child, Trayvon Martin, the attorney general, no one said that he was not welcome in the state. Actually, they welcomed him with uh, <laughs> with open arms. Yes. No, he was not convicted of murder. But we all know he stalked a young teenage black boy. And when that teenager tried to defend himself because he didn't know why this guy was, this creepy white guy, as he put it, was following him. George Zimmerman killed him. And most major, we found out during that, during, during his trial, that most of the big corporations, which you and I use their products every day, helped pay for his lawyer fees. But this senior citizen, old black man, O.J. Simpson, is too dangerous to be brought back to Florida to live in Florida because he's going to be golfing all around the state. Hmm. Now, if you don't, if this doesn't spell racism, if you're naive and you're one to say, hey, nah, racism, you know, it used to exist, but it doesn't exist now. I, 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 I want to hear from you. This is a cold case of racism. I mean, <laughs> I tell you. But, I want to hear your views. I may be dragging this out of proportion. Maybe OJ is a dangerous criminal who should not be allowed to be in Florida. And he should not be allowed to golf in Florida. On the news yesterday, it, it really, you know, bothered me. But, the... Um, home that he's living in now in in Vegas. Um it's a gorgeous mansion. It has a golf course right on the property. 
And the news people were saying, hey, he's living in luxury. And he, and you know, and it was not, it was not his property, but they don't care. They want him, I guess, to be in a cardboard box uh, under the freeway. I, I don't know. I mean, I guess that's where they think he belongs. But I tell you, we have different laws, just like in the, you know, back in the day where the South had Jim Crow laws and and it, uh, we still have those laws. I mean, they're not called Jim Crow, but why, you know, do you have laws for white people and you have laws for black people? That's how I feel. Let me know. Let me know. I'm, I'm going to give this back to you. <laughs> and uh, please click and comment about this. Because it's 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 very disturbing for me, uh, but uh, just 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 let me know how you feel about this. All right, as always in clothing, closing, closing. <laughs> Be blessed, y'all. Bye. What we do here is go back, 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 back.